this is Alma and welcome to my book journey and I can't believe we are already ready <laughs> to start a new TBR for the next month it's this March has just blew by and so sorry today I'm going to be sharing with you my pile of possibilities for April I have a couple of of uh, readathons that I'm going to be participating in, and then also my regular four yearly challenges that I'm going to be doing as well. And so I'll just go through it and I'm going to try something different this month because I really want to read, like mood read kind of, but within the parameters of all these um, readathons and, and challenges, kind of give myself some options during the month. And then Knowing me during the month, I'll probably find other things <laughs> at the library and whatnot that kind of appeal to me or call to me when I'm there. So I may add other things along the way and not read any of this or most of it. <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, so, so let me do uh, my four uh, yearly challenges first. We'll get those. And I have like several well, some, some challenges, I'm like going back and forth, depending on how I feel this month. So the first one is Chantel, um, her, her reading challenge. And I am on the Doyle track still. Well, I think, I think this month in April, everybody does the same thing. And then next month, we have the option to split, to change if we want to. So, I, so whether you're on the Montgomery or the Doyle, we're all doing the same prompt. And that is... Uh, a book that has a character with red hair. And so I had, I did one. I've already read a book this month and I thought, oh, that would have been good for that challenge. So I'll just put this out there for you all that are trying to find a um, like recommendation. So this book is called The Lost Melody by Joanne Politano. And I read this, this already this year and I really enjoyed it. And she has red hair. So if you you know, have, are thinking of ideas. Here's one for you. But so I've already read that. One, so I kept, I'm not going to reread that one again. So I have two options for this. And like I said, depending on how I feel this month with mood reading and everything, we'll see how it goes. But I picked up this series a while back and I really want to read it. My sister, my daughter, my older daughter read it a while back and she really enjoyed it. And so I want to read this first one and see whether or not I want to keep this set or, un or unhaul it. But this one's called The Selection by Kira Cass. And you can see she's got red hair. And some people have called this kind of like a, is it kind of like a, a competition? Let's see. Let me just read the back uh, here for you. It says, for 35 girls, selection is a chance of a lifetime, the opportunity to be swept up in a world of glittering gowns and priceless jewels, to live in a palace and compete for the heart of gorgeous Prince Maxim. But for America's singer, being selected is a nightmare. It means turning her back on her secret love of, with Aspen, who is a cast below her. So heck, I guess apparently there's a caste system in this, in this world and leaving her home to, to enter a fierce competition for a crown she doesn't want. So it sounds kind of interesting. There's, you know, a, this, I believe this is YA. Yes, it's YA kind of fantasy with the competition that all these girls are gonna be in. So let me know in the comments below. Like I said, it's been around for a while. Let me know in the comments below if you've already read this. So this is one option for Chantel's challenge. Another option is another book that's been on my TBR over and over. This is a library book, and I've checked this out several times and then never read it and then returned it. But this is, of course, um, Anna Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery, and she's got red hair. And then one, my fourth, uh, I'll skip ahead because this one counts. If I, if I do this one, this would count for two of my yearly challenges. Uh, Angie, book mama, she's, her challenge for April is read a book with the color in the title. And so green would count. So if I did this book, I would knock out two of my yearly challenges. I'd do Chantel's and Angie's with this one. But i um, sorry, this one, I really have to be in the mood to read this one, I think. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, yes, it counts for two, but 
will I be in the mood this month for this one? So there's that. And I know many of you have read this or may, you know, you can tell me, yeah, read, you know, make sure you read it. So there's Chantel's challenge. And then the next challenge is Katie, uh, paperbacks and ponytails and her, um, got to get it out because I totally forgot her challenge prompt for April is hey Rocky is a book oh yeah a book you would take you would take on vacation and so I I'm going to read and this one I will read <laughs> definitely because I fi it finally I picked it up at the library today it was on hold for a while and this is the third one, third book in the Caravel um, trilogy. And I'm really excited to finish this series off. So this is the one I'm going to read for Katie's. This is one, you know, you could take on a vacation and, you know, sip and read it. So, and I'm not going to say too much about this one because this is the third book, but I'm really excited about seeing how this series ends because I really enjoyed the first, the first two books. So that's for Katie's. And then we have Jane's, um, Jane, Jane reads, Jeanette with Jane reads her challenge and her prompt for April is a new to you author. And so I, I picked this book up along. Another thing I'm trying to do this, this month is re reading books that I own. So selection was one. And now this one is also one I own. And this one's called The Doctor's Lady and it's by Jody Hedlund. And this one is, is, is also going to count for a couple different things. So this one is called, this one says, Priscilla White knew God wanted her to be a missionary, not a wife. Then the missionary board declares the only way she can serve is to be married. Now married in name only, her epic journey west will test her spirit and the new longingness of her heart. So marriage of convenience kind of uh, idea behind this one and i've heard good things about this this author like i said new to me author so i'm excited about this one so that's for jane jane reads and then oshina's is christian romance i'm going to do oh i i think i'm going to pick um pro, her prompt number five which is a, a cute cover and for that one i'm going to do a book i don't have it yet it, i pre-ordered it but it should be here because it re, it it comes out in april and that is by becca kinzer and it's called love and tandem and i read her first book last year and loved it and my husband and i've been eagerly waiting for this one and so this one is about um a woman and a, a guy and a girl that go like tend on a tandem bike and I really didn't want to know too much about it. I just I just knew I was going to read it because I loved her her first book so much. It was so funny. So I, I've been anticipating this book for a long time. So that is going to count for Oshina's challenge. Okay. So those are my yearly, the yearly challenges. And so the two um, readathons that I'm going to participate in or try, you know, do the do it the best I can anyway to participate in. And the first one is one that um, Cheryl from Candlewick Library and Anne from In Search of Wonder, they kind of, I saw them talk about this one. And this is um, a readathon that's called Alcott April. And that is being put on by Tiffany from Beautiful Minutia. And she's got some co hosts, Novel Idea, Katie Reads a Lot, um, In Search, Anne In Search of Wonder. She's one of the co hosts, Bookish Prince and Bookish Princess. And I'll link all of their their channels below as well, along with uh, Tiffany's announcement video, because she's, they're going to have other, um, like, a, a they have a group read, and then they're going to have other things going on too, but I'll just put her announcement video below. So for, for this one, I'm not going to do, like, all the prompts, because they have different prompts, but I did want to try to do the group read, and I was able to re, uh, find find it in the library and it's called the inheritance inheritance and so this one is somebody said that she 
now this is the author that wrote like little women and little men and she re does a lot of middle grade but this is an adult book it's not a middle grade book and so i'm not really sure what this one's about it says i want to do something splendid something heroic or wonderful that won't be forgotten after i'm dead i think i shall write books oh that's what she said let's see my first novel written at 17. so i'm gonna um do my, it's it's a short book so i'm gonna really do my best to participate in that that readathon with everybody and then do the group read along with with everybody too now while i was at the library when i was picked up that one i looked to see what other books um she because i've never read little women but i didn't want to pick it up because that one's pretty big <laughs> so i want you know i might get around to reading that eventually but i just didn't want to pick that up today for this month anyway because i had so much to read but i found these cute books that and they're um this one is part of the hidden gems collection and this one's called eight cousins and they're they're, they're just precious books so if i get time maybe i'll i'll read another one of her books for for all caught all caught april but there's that one and this one is middle grade about it says um from the creator of the classic little women eight cousins is a story of a 13 year old rose campbell who finds herself in the care of her extended family after her wealthy father dies surrounded by her great aunts her father's brothers their wives and her seven rambunctious male cousins and finding a fast friend and a young housemaid, Phoebe. Rose spends a year taking chances, learning new things, and discovering what it means to be part of a large, loving family. So it really sounds really cute. Like I said, my library had all of, all of the, there's a whole series of books. So if I really, if I like this one, maybe I'll continue on with that story. So we'll see. Okay, so that is all for, that I'm doing for the Alcott April. Now the big um, readathon is is um, Katie's uh, spring. And let me. I want to make sure I get her the name of her readathon right. And I will link Katie's uh, announcement video where she has like her printouts where you can print out the um, the prompts and everything. And so her readathon is called Shower Me with Flowers readathon that's why i'm wearing my flowers today for spring and so she ha she gave us 10 prompts and she said we can you know double up our prompts so definitely since there's 10 you know maybe you can do that but i i'm gonna talk about all 10 of them and what my possibilities are and we'll see you know because some of them you could definitely um double up on so i'll just go through these and and tell you what i have to do you know hopefully <laughs> let's see what we do and a lot of these i'm like i really want to read them and try to get it get it done so the first one and her prompts are all based on names of flowers so the first one is magnolia and it's a, a character who is royalty and so and of course there's you know you, the possibilities right but I was watching a, a video and I want to make sure I, I um, give her credit because she gave me this recommendation. And this was from Tab, her channel, Tabitha Gabriel, Gabriel, and I'll link that her channel below too. But she talked about this in one of her recommendations, this series, and she said it was really good. And this book is called The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. e. Pearson. And it's book one of a series. And so this one is about, it says, a princess must find her place in a reborn world. She flees on her wedding day. So here's one that you can, because um, Katie says, if, if there's any wedding in um, one of the other prompts, it talks, talks about wedding. So, you know, you can definitely double, double up on prompts, she said. She, and I just, when I read this, I'm like, oh yeah, I can do that with, with this one. She flees on her wedding day. She steals ancient documents from the Chancellor's secret collection. She is pursued by bounty hunters sent by her own father. Wow. She is a prince. She is Princess Lai. Is it Laia? Leia or Leia? 17, first daughter of the House of Morgan. It's got a cool map. Love maps. So, like I said, Tabitha said it was a really, really good read. So, I'm, you know, 
I'm excited about this one. So that one's going to count for the first prompt. And then the second one is a white rose. And that is read a book that, um, that has a married couple. And so for that one, I have two, um, I can use this, the doctor's lady, because she's married. So I could use that one. I'm already going to read it for another prompt. So I could do this one. Or I could, I also have a book that I have on my Kindle. And that one's called, um, let's see, it is called Out of a Dream by Rosemary Hines. And that one is, that one sounds really interesting because it's about a newlywed couple and the woman, the wife, she start, she goes into some kind of new age or new world bookstore and she gets like carried away with something and it kind of affects her marriage. So that sounds, and that's a, another Christian uh, fiction book. And that one sounds interesting. So that could be a possibility for me to read for that, for that prompt. And then the next uh, prompt, the flower is sunflowers and this one is read a book that has a fortune of fortune 400 or a character who is wealthy and in society so for that i recently bought not bought i recently picked up a bunch of free uh, ebooks and some of them had to do with billionaires so my husband was like well read one of those billionaire books so that one i'm going to read the billionaire love match and that's by emma st Clair, and that's a romance uh, a christian clean romance book so i'll put that up here because i that one like i said is on my kindle so that one will count for that challenge or that prompt and then number five is Hy hydrania and that is a character who is heartless or a villain or a villain so a book a book that has a, a villain in it basically and so for that one i have two possibilities <laughs> so now this one i've talked about a couple times now and it's, this is um deceived by aaron hannon and this is the third book in this series and i need to finish the series so i could possibly read this book and this one again is about a, a pi private investigators and they you know solve um crimes not crimes but ish you know issues and things and so there's definitely going to be a, a villain in here there's always a villain in these these suspense books christian suspense books so i could read this one and finally finish the series or <laughs> i found this at the library it's a brand new it's pretty new it's um by elizabeth camden the women of midtown while the city sleeps it has a beautiful cover and so this is really interesting it says um Catherine Schneider's life as a dentist in 1913 New York is upended when a patient reveals details of a deadly plot while under the influence of laughing gas. As she is plunged into danger, she seeks help from the dashing Lieutenant Jonathan Birch, a police officer she, police officer she has long admired from afar. So it just sounds really, I mean, there's a villain in this one, of course, and it's a, you know, it's a historical Christian historical fiction, and then also a little bit of mystery and suspense. And I had on on one of my Facebook Facebook groups, Christian um, readers, somebody had posted about this and said, "This is the best book they've read this year," and they like read it in a day because they couldn't put it down. It was just like, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I really." And that's why I'm like, should I, <laughs> you know, which one? Maybe I, I could read them both if I get this done in a day. But I really love paid, you know, really good suspense and page turners. So let me know if, if you've read this one, if, if that person's correct, if it's um, one that you can't put down. It's great. Um, and I love the idea of her being a dentist back in 1913. So it must not have been, you know, really easy. So there's that one for that prompt. And then the next one is uh, Lantana is the name of the flower. And this is a character that goes on an adventure. And for that one, I'm going to do the love in tandem because they're going to go on an adventure on this tandem bike. It's, that one is by Becca Kenzer. So that one will count as for that one. And then the next one is prompt number seven, and it's carnations. And this one is read a mother-daughter story or a mother-son story. So mother-daughter 
Mother Sun. And so for that one, I somebody recommended um and somebody recommended this book and I'm like, oh, I have it. I remember I had picked this up at a um a thrift store a long time ago. And this one's called The Debt by Angela Hunt. And so it says here, after fleeing a painful and compromising past, Emma Rose Howard settled eagerly into the role of a pastor's wife. She and her husband, Abel, dedicated themselves to parenting a mega church and influenced thousands of lives through its related ministries. But when Emma Rose receives a phone call from a living, breathing remnant of her troubled past, she finds herself wondering if something in her life is woefully out of balance. The presence of this unexpected intruder soon, soon threatens everything Emma Rose has believed about her calling, her marriage, and her relationship with God. And so this one, I've heard many people say that it's really uh, impactful. So that's going to count for that prompt. And then we have number eight, and this is Lincoln or Red Roses. And that one is uh, just read a romance. And so I've already have a few that are romances. So towards the end of the month, if I'm getting low on, that's definitely going to be one I'm going to double up on. But I really would like to read this romance because it's called Pride and Prejudice. And it's very, of course, very famous. And I see all these uh, books that are based on this book, but it's like I can't read those until I read, actually read this one. I mean, I don't want to spoil this book for myself. And I've never seen any of the movies for that same reason. So would love to read this classic and um, and really enjoy it. And I know a lot of people like Taylor uh, with Tays and Treats. She, I think she says this is like one of her favorite um, romance books. So that one would count for my prompt. And then we have number nine, and that's Peonies, which is read a book that has a flawed character. And for that one, I, I want to read this one. <laughs> This is one that I really want to read this month because um, I bought this a while back, but I've heard really wonderful things about this one. This one's called The Edge of Belonging by Amanda Cox. And so it says, when Ivy Rose returns to her hometown to oversee her late grandmother's estate sale, she soon discovers that the woman behind left behind more than trinkets and photo frames. She provided a path to the truth behind Ivy's adoption. Shocked, Ivy seeks clues to her past, but a key piece to the, miss the mystery is missing. And then it says, 24 years earlier, Harvey James finds an abandoned newborn who gives him a sense of human connection for the first time in his life. His desire to care for the baby runs up against the stark fact that he is homeless. So it, it sounds like it's like a dual timeline, maybe, with his part in the past and then Ivy's in the present time. So. This one is, um, this is one of the books I'm really looking forward to this month. So there's that. And then the last one is the, a hero that doesn't claim to be one. And I think I doubled up on that one with the edge of belonging. I think I used that one for that one. If I, if I remember right. Yep. Yeah. And then, so, like I said, she has all these um, prompts, but she does also have a group read, and she just announced that today. She had a poll up with, I think, four books, and the one that won is, and I'll put that up here too, is What Happens Next by Christina Suzanne Nelson. And this is a suspense, a Christian fiction suspense, and it's evidently about a podcaster. That's all I know, so. I don't have that one. I'll gonna. I'll probably. I do want to participate in that that group read with everybody, but I'll check that out. Check that out on uh, Libby for that one. So there's all the the prompts for the books for the prompts for her for her readathon. But of course, I always have extra books that I pick up that I see that I want to do. Um, this one I actually. Tr 
I don't know. I might try to finish this one this month or start it. It's called Mandy and the Secret Tunnel. I can't remember who was talking about these Mandy books. So maybe if I, you know, have time to read that. It's just a small little um, um, middle grade book. And then on this one, I'm going to cheat because <laughs> I was my husband, I'm going to cheat on this book. I keep seeing this in on BookTube, the uh, Keeper of the Lost Cities books. And there's, I can't remember, I, there's quite a few of those now. And I saw this at the library and, <laughs> and I don't read um, graphic novels. They're not really my thing at all. <laughs> but I saw this one and I said, well, if I read this, then it'll, if it's, it'll tell me what the story's about. And if it's something I'll be interested in, and then maybe I'll read, because like I said, I see people, you know, just raving about these books. So that's a possible, you know, that'll be an easy read because it's a graphic novel. This is just for me for curiosity to see if I'll, I'll enjoy that book. And let me know, do you like that series? I know a lot of people, you know, they go on and on about it. Um, I didn't know if any... I've never read a Jamie Jo Wright book, and this one's called The Curse of Misty Wayfair. I might get in the mood to read one, read this book, and I don't know. Maybe after I read, read through, as I'm reading through it, it might fit one of the prompts in Katie's challenge. So if it, you know, let me know in the comments below if you've already read this and, and you think, well, that would count for this or this or that, you know. So that's a possibility. And the this her books are kind of like. Um, kind of spooky and with mystery and dual timeline and stuff. And so I've always been curious about it. And I ended, I, I got this a while back and I haven't got around to reading it yet. So maybe, maybe this month. And then the last one I have here is, oh, I still have one more to do. Sorry, two more to do. This one is, um, as you all, a lot of you may know the, next month on april i'm trying to think what the date is pretty early in april the we're going to experience the total uh, the um, total solar eclipse and so for our homeschool we're gonna you know really kind of study you know do like a little deep dive into that before it happens and so i picked this book up because it's like the his has a little uh it's um i thought it was a a like just to tell a, book, a nonfiction book about the the eclipse, but this is like a it, it is nonfiction, but it's kind of a tale of the people in. Um, well, I, I'll just read this little first part. It says on a scorching July afternoon in 1878, at the dawn of the Gilded Age, the moon's shadow descended on the American West darkening skies from Montana Territory to Texas. This rare celestial event, a total solar eclipse, offered a priceless opportunity to solve some of the solar system's most enduring riddles, and it prompted a clutch of enterprising scientists to brave the wild frontier in a grueling race to the Rocky Mountains. So it's a story, uh, sto true, it's a true story, but it's it sounds like it's written like a, like a, almost like a fiction, you know, to keep you entertained, but they're giving you all the, the, what, the history of what happened. And it's going to be like three specific scientists that were studying this back in, in the 1800s. And one of the scientists is a woman. So it'd be an astronomer that's a woman. It'd be interesting to get her point of view. And then also the last um, scientist is the young um thomas edison and you know he's pretty famous right so this is a book i may may read this month too since the solar eclipse is happening so that would be real fun to read okay i thought i was done but i'm not so it's time to pick my one out of the jar for the month like i don't have enough already but let's see maybe i and some some of these that i've chosen well, not some, a couple of them are already in here. So maybe I'll pick them out. Okay, Rocky. Rocky's looking at me going, when are you going to be done filming this video? <laughs> Almost, Rocky. Okay. Let's see. 
And I hope it's not a chunker. It is all the light we cannot see. And so give me just a second and I'll go grab that. Okay, I'm back. So here is the book, All the Light We Cannot See. And this is by Anthony Doerr. And this one, I actually have been wanting to read this for a long time. I heard about it. It's a, it's a World War II book. And I think they even made a movie, a movie, on, a movie of it. Um, so... This one is, it says, uh, Marie LeBlanc lives with her father in Paris near the Museum of Natural History where he works. When she is 12, the Nazi occupy Paris and father and daughter flee to the walled citadel of St. Malo where Marie Laurie's reclusive great uncle lives in a tall house by the sea. With them, they carry what might be the museum's most valuable and dangerous jewel. So that is my pick from my jar. This one is not Christian fiction. It's a, his, a historical fiction. Uh, please let me know in the comments below if you've read this book and tell me, you know, if you liked it. I, I imagine that I will like it because I, I love historical fiction and um, especially World War II stories. Really enjoy those. And... So, yes, I mean, it is a chunker, but I, I think this is one of those ones that I'm not going to have a hard time reading because the story is going to be so interesting and I'll probably be crying. I always cry in these World War II books. So, okay, so that is it. And I have, like I said, I've got a ton of books for April. Probably won't read all of them, but I've given myself some options for when I, you know, that whole thing that I was talking about being able to mood mood read some and figure out you know what I feel like reading and it's also my birthday month so I really just want to enjoy myself and not you know get stressed myself out about wanting to get things get things read or get things done and so I have quite a few I oh, I left one out I just saw it this one's an, an extra though because um, this one is if I don't do um, one of these other other ones this one could be a book that has a color in it that was one of my prompts and this one's called between the shades of gray and this one's by ruta sapetti and i've read the other book of ruta sapetti that i loved and it kind of went with this one actually they're a duology kind of and that was the salt of the sea and i really love that one i read that in january i believe and so this one I may pick this one up. Like I said, I might if I feel like I'm in the mood for that kind of read. And this one is young, um, young adult as well, so it should not be a hard, um, you know, a hard or long read. So, you know, I just have some of these uh, <laughs> prompts. You know, you can you have so many options, and then you want to read all your options, but you just can't do all of them in <laughs> one. But, so there we go. That is what I have on my uh, April TBR. Thank you for sticking around and watching this whole video. Sorry, I probably went over too far, went too long. But uh, let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books. or And also let me know if you are going to be joining us either in the um, A Alcott April or April Alcott Readathon or in Katie's um, challenge um, readathon challenge and again i'll link all that information below for you let let me know what you know what are your if you're doing katie's what what books are you choosing for your prompts we'd love to love to know what you're reading and you know give me some more ideas just in case <laughs> just in case okay well that is it for today thank you so much again for joining me and you all have a blessed day bye-bye